Hello guys, Prox here and welcome back to another video. <coughs> In this video we're going to be modeling the uh, pistol grip. Or at least turbo smoothing and fixing up this model a little bit. It's quite uh, it's quite alright already, so uh, I think I'm going to stick with it. Um, first off, I'm going to start uh, to make a rim. That'll... Uh, That'll sort of accentuate the grip area. First I'm going to select the polygons that I want to uh, extrude or inset. I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet. Like so. That looks crazy. So I just see if I can uh, get this right. It's it's something uh, wrong with the scales. That's why it's that's why they built up like that. It's, it saves the settings to like twenty four centimeters, and I'm working with less than a millimeter here, so should probably change the settings to millimeters uh, next time that I'm working. You know, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do and uh, how big I want the grip area to be. This the pistol grip here won't be uh, exact to the real one. I'm kind of making a custom one. You know, basically because the real one is a little bit boring, and uh, I just want to add some extra detail. <laughs> there again, you see it saved the settings for for the last time, and that's uh, something that you can uh, fix by resetting the X factor. Uh, the uh, I don't do it here, but you can fix it easily by going into Tools and Reset X Form on the selected object, and then you just convert it to an editable poly again. So right here, I'm trying to make a uh, sort of an indent around the uh, the grip area. This will probably be I'm probably going to texture this uh, later on. And uh, it helps kind of separate what's going to be textured and what's going to be smooth and so on. So now I'm working on the bottom here and I'm trying to figure out uh, how I want it to be. On, on the real one, on the uh, real grip, there is a cap on the bottom and inside you can put the iron sights if you don't use them. But uh, I'm not going to make that on this model because I don't need it. There's just no reason for it. You won't ever see the bottom of the gun anyways. So I'm just going to, I'm trying to, maybe I want an indent. Here I'm thinking about making the the cap and making the uh, inside of the pistol grip. But then I kind of wisen up about that part and then I just decide to, I think I decide to leave it for now and uh, then go work on some other parts and that's a technique that i often use if i can't figure out an area just leave it and uh, work on something else until until your mind kind of subconsciously figures out the solution that's how that's usually how i work if i if i work on something and it's not working and I'm, my mind is not made on it I just switch just switch uh work area and work on something else so here i started to work on the top started basically doing uh, loops and stuff like that that doesn't take up very much mind capacity you know you can think of your mind as sort of a processor a multi-core processor if you will and uh, just leave one core to think of uh, something else and then you take on uh, another task while that's kind of thinking of the solution And uh, I run into another problem. Basically, that's uh, because that's not a quad, the, the undersurface there. I can't ring it properly. So I have to uh, first make the support edges for the uh, see, under part here of the grip. And then I have to cut manually in to... Uh,
to uh, create this this support edges that goes around the top. And here, what I'm trying to do here is I want to space this out at the back because I don't want to I don't want a strong crease. You know, if you have edges really close together during the turbo smoothing process, you get real uh, tight creases. And uh, I'm trying to avoid that by sp by splitting them up. So yeah, yeah, as you can see, the loop doesn't go all the way around. And so I'm just going to bring it to the back here and then I'm uh I'm kind of indecisive. I'm not sure what I want to do if I want to just connect it. I'm trying to I think I'm, I'm going to try to connect it first and then I figure out that that doesn't work because of the concave. And uh, so I uh, see if it's connected. Yeah, it's connected so I can make a cut. It's like the cut tool basically just turn the uh, pentagon into a quad and uh, then I can cut the support edge not from that one from the middle here and over to the center I mean I don't care about symmetry at the moment I'll probably symmetry this later so at a later date but uh, right now it doesn't really matter I just want to get the geometry out there so we make the support edge for the front move it up a little bit I can see the vertice is a little bit off at the edge there but it doesn't matter I think I fixed that later I'm not sure and uh, so I'm trying to make the support edges around the ring around the top of it Um, yeah, no, that wasn't the support edges. That's just to keep the flow going. And here's a trick. Yeah, you can see. If, well, it's pretty obvious, but if you get to a corner like this, you just uh, loop the around, so you don't need to create an extra set of lines that goes through your entire model. Just cap it off at the end like that and everything will be sweet and here you can see our first iteration of turbo smooth this uh <laughs> it looks very soft so i'm going to start sharpening up edges and as i can see it's uh, not quite the size i wanted and it's not in the right place right at the edge there it's too soft up there so I'm going to sharpen that up a little bit. First I'm going to scale it out to sort of match the size. You know, even it, when it's bigger, when it ter gets turbo smoothed, it sort of gets scaled in a little bit. The edges get softened off and uh, stuff like that. That's easy to account for. Just gonna reset the pivot here so it's at the center because it's kind of annoying moving the model around when it's not in the center. And uh, move these lines up to tighten them. Move the entire model up. I'm probably gonna move it up even more and. Just trying to adjust it so it fits the underbarrel a little bit more. And here again, as you can see, I don't want to make a tight crease. So I first I ring that part and then I tighten up the front, which is where I want the sharp edges. And uh, I leave I, I kind I leave the ones at the back be just so they can be uh, separated enough to avoid sort of a tight crease here I'm just looking at the model just checking see if everything fits that's that's a really important to take your time and just look at everything. Look at how how the light reflects, how it how it curves, 
as you can see I wasn't satisfied with the length there so I'm going to change it and uh, oh And now I think I start to see that this is a little too loose. So I'm going to move it up and level it out. Oops, wrong axis. That's the one. And then I'm going to make the uh, support edges that go around the top and the sides. And they go all the way to the bottom. It doesn't really bother me. That's okay. Then force them out to the edge, like so. Sweet. Looks better. Now, if uh, there was a guy who commented uh, earlier and he wanted me to make a full tutorial, um, if if he wanted me to make a tutorial from the beginning, making the model from the beginning and up. That's kind of, well, I'm going to do that later, but not for this gun. I'm probably going to do it for a gun that I don't have a model on. Like, uh, I was thinking about doing it the AUG A3 from Battlefield 3. Or, uh, yeah, another gun. I'll, I'll probably be doing a lot of guns through this series, just uh, keeping my practice up because I've kind of, I haven't modeled guns in, uh, in quite a while. But yeah, I'll. Doing, I'll be doing from the ground up tutorials as well. This this uh, DHK416 uh, is sort of more of a you know remodeling some pieces and uh, and making it look nicer. You know, if I wasn't satisfied, here I made the bottom a little bit thicker and uh, trying to um, uh, make that curve a little bit better. But I'm running, I'm running into some issues, as you can see uh, in the corner there. It's uh, there's a pole, and poles are never good. You know, a pole is a connection of more than four vertices, more than four lines connecting to one vertices, creates a pole. It's that little star with five uh, just connected to it down in the corner there, and that's going to create some problems for me with the edge loops. I'm going to show you later how I fix that. First, I'm going to tighten up. the edges and I'm gonna make an indent here um, <laughs> fiddling around with these settings because uh, of the scale again the scale issue I, I don't know why I didn't why I didn't fix that that would be nice if I showed you how to do that probably show you in another video so here I'm just gonna chamfer the edges because uh, I can't be bothered with uh, selecting all the inner lines and stuff so I make it quick creates three lines on each edge and uh, that creates a nice crease. Although uh, I created a lot of polygons there, something you just should sort of strive for is to have less polygons uh, on the uh, on on the un un turbo smoothed. Uh, model of course you'll have a lot more polygons than on the low poly version but you know if you try to keep it as low poly as you can it's easier to work with you can kind of avoid a lot of mess the, the less polygons you have it's easier to do the edge loops and do everything correct and I, I'm I'll be doing something in Maya uh, for Dota 2 later on show you how to model and uh, export your model to the uh, steam workshop so you can sell your freelance stuff if you have some extra time someday or maybe you, uh, you're just doing this for fun you can make some models and put them into dota and make money off them if uh, valve selects yours they've selected a lot of models they they have some requirements but they don't seem to uh, 
you know enforce the quality as much i've seen i've looked at a lot of the models there and it, a lot of amateur work i'm not gonna say that there's no good things there's just a lot of good stuff on the uh, on the steam workshop uh, but there's a lot of amateur stuff as well that actually gets accepted that's gotten accepted into the game which is uh, really cool i think i think that's really cool and here i'm addressing the uh, pole issue and the only thing i'm doing is i'm moving the pole you can't really sometimes you can get rid of a pole but it takes a lot of extra work and so here i'm just going to move it in uh one set of lines to get it away from the uh, edge because if it's at the edge it creates sort of a point uh, sort of a, a nipple if you will <laughs> which is uh, annoying because I don't want, want that here I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of confused why it doesn't work but I'm, I'm figuring out that uh, as you can see the normals are opposite that's because I probably mirrored this model before so um, I'm gonna have to do them one at a time and there are a lot faster ways of doing this I'm just uh, kind of uh, out of practice at the moment um, what I, I could have done is I used the graphite modeling tools but uh, you know whatever works it's whatever's needed. You don't have to do more work. You know, as long as you get the job done, you should be happy. So I set it to uh, 86 there, to negative 86 to get the exact. Oh, there was an extra line. Delete that. And uh, take a look at it. Looks okay. I've changed this model after I made the video. Um, I created some grooves for fingers, like finger grooves and stuff like that. You know, you, um, you'll probably see how it looks in the next video, which will probably be the stock. And the stock will be a complete remodel. I'm not going to use that stock because it's an ugly stock. <laughs> that stock is a model of a stock of an M4. It's an M4 stock for like, a, oh, it's plastic and yeah. I. Uh, I'm gonna make a custom stock. Maybe I'll make a real stock from Magpul. Maybe they have some cool stocks, but I'm not sure. I think a custom stock will be really nice. Some things uh, like that peripherals on the gun is sort of the thing that I accept that are not realistic, but stuff that, uh, like the mechanics, like the. Uh, like the undercarriage or the chamber and the bolt and stuff like that that's I, I'm like that's gotta be correct so um, I'm just looking around at the model I think I'm gonna change one more thing and just extend the bottom of the uh, grip for a, a little bit and then I'll uh, wrap up the model for this time Basically now I'm just uh, looking at it, see if I want to change anything. Does it fit? Does it not fit? Do I like it? Do I not like it? What's what's the change? You know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> it's not really useful for you guys to watch but it's useful for you guys to learn to do this and that is to just to look at your model and try to look at it uh, and very objectively you know sometimes if you make something really cool and you like it you, you, that's a really hard time to look at and you like yeah i really really like it but you should sort of take a step back and see well eh, something's a little wrong here i might want to add something it looks a little bit bland it's a little bit boring and uh, I thought it was a little bit boring. I kind of wanted something at the end there, but I was I wasn't really sure. So what I'm I'm I think I end up making an extrude, making an inset. And as you can see here, the corners get a little too tight. So what I do is I inset by zero, and then I scale it instead because that uh, 
keeps the distances of the vertices uh, uniform. So I think that's, I think I leave it at that. I just uh, add support edges so the turbo smooth looks uh, nice. And uh, after that, I think I'm done. Yeah. So if you want to see more uh, HK416 modeling and uh, other 3D modeling, just uh, subscribe to my channel. Do feel free to leave a comment if you don't like it. <laughs> leave a comment if you like it as well. That would be great. And uh, yeah. I'm taking a look at this model just to see how, what I'm going to do with it later. I'm not sure. We'll take a look. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Prox out.